It's time to work on this year's Christmas lighting display panel. And uh, this year I've decided to go for something simpler based on stars. <clears throat> what I'm going to do, I'm going to make a aluminium frame and I'm going to effectively divide it into eight sections. In each of those sections, I'm just going to have an effect. And uh, then I'm going to have a border around the outside Possibly radiusing at the corners, not really sure yet. I've not decided until I put it together. And those uh, items in the middle will be animated. They'll fill in various ways, you know, they'll just zigzag up and down or backwards and forwards. They'll, most of the time, the unit is just going to be very animated with the uh, controller, the Department of Villainy controller, which I have the circuit board for right here. I'm also going to put a background of just plain blue LEDs to create a sort of almost like a window effect but with these animated stars. I've just drawn circles because uh, drawing a star, well let me let me try drawing a star, it's going to be roughly, yeah see that's that's where it went badly wrong. Yeah anyway that's why I didn't draw stars. If it was just a simple uh, star of David's star that would be so easy but it's going to be a five pointed star. Maybe I should get some uh, star drawing practice in. So to make it easier for the stars, I've decided to use commercial frames from eBay. And these are actually designed to be powered from either uh, AA cells, three AA cells, or a USB power supply. And I'll show you what it looks like. It's smart enough, although there is a quite a strong uh, intensity gradient. So if I take the exposure off and I turn this off, uh, you're not actually seeing too bad. I shall just nudge it over there so it tames it down. You can see how it's a lot hotter here versus there where it, the intensity tails off because this is low voltage LED tape but when it swamps out uh, it's not too bad however light is coming back watch your eyes when I do this I want to actually swap the existing low voltage LED rope for uh, 12 volt stuff just so it's compatible with the standard 12 volt supply it's doing everything else it also means it's going to have a consistency intensity from one end to the other. It's going to be fairly bright and it's going to be a very known current. Things worthy of note with this. You've got the choice of the USB or the little pack of... Uh, well, that's quite warm in there, that resistor. There is a resistor in here just limiting the current through that. Uh, but you have a choice of the uh, AA cells or the USB. If you put the... If you plug it into USB, email it's off the switch won't work because it just basically powers the stuff directly. It's worth noting if the switch is in the on position and you've got double A cells in, it will apply 5 volts directly across those with no real current limiting other than the incoming cable. So if you had nickel metal hydride cells, it could charge them at quite high current. If you've got alkaline cells, it could actually try and charge them with the risk that if you ran it on USB for a while, with these simmering away in the background, the batteries could explode. That's worth mentioning because that's what happens with alkaline cells when they're sort of charged at high current. Now, let's start taking this to bits and I'll show you what I'm planning on doing here. Oh, I'm also planning on having a different colour for every star. So uh, it's just for variety, but then again, it's, I don't even know how this is going to end up yet, so I may change my mind in that regard. So once you've taken the screw off the back of this, the front unclips, there is a bit of hot melt glue. Let's uh, get some isopropanol on that. Isopropanol everywhere but on the hot melt glue, apparently. Let's see if we can loosen that off. And we'll take the existing material out. It's, you can still keep the existing material, it's useful enough as... Uh, low voltage LED neon, but this is just basically laid into the frame like this quite tightly. It's a snug fit. I mean, it's not super tight, but just the fact that it is laid in sort of linearly just seems to make it uh, trap in there quite tightly. Uh, easy enough to get out though. And once it is out, we have A, our useful length of LED low voltage neon stuff. Uh, and we get this nice plastic frame that's going to accommodate the new stuff. So I ordered uh, lots of colours, just short lengths, from a UK supplier. I thought it was actually a Chinese warehouse, but it turned out to be an actual UK seller. Um, which is odd, because it seemed a bit too cheap, in a way, for someone actually in the UK selling it. But we'll see what happens. So, my plan is, 
here's a here's one of the colours. I've chosen pink in this instance just because that's a, the symbolic colour of the channel. I shall plug this in. What I've done, I've got an excess of material here. I've cut the end off and I've pre-terminated a little temporary connection lead onto it so that I can plug it in and power it up and that is going to show me if something goes wrong when I'm putting it in because it's possible when using this stuff to actually, as you bend it, it can actually break solder connections and the LEDs. So in this instance where you can already see that it's really quite bright uh, compared to the other stuff. So in this instance, the LED strip the circuit board i'm going to put it on the outside so that it goes over a softer radius um, because i noticed that's what the uh, existing stuff there was and if you went over too tight a radius it's going to potentially damage the leds in that because these are quite tight uh, bends here so um, this stripe here is going to go on the outside and this is the material that can be cut every inch or 25 millimeters which is very handy so i'm going to butt it hard up to there and I'm going to sit it in here and I'm just going to start working it around the frame here. It's not that hard. Once you've done one or two, it all comes very straightforward. Someone somewhere in China, well, lots of people somewhere in China, spend their whole day stuffing this stuff into uh, frames in a factory. Not sure I'd like to do this all day long, eight hours a day or more. Probably more as you as it came up to Christmas and the demand was there. Although hopefully, well, these are kind of generic effects. They're probably going to be popular all year round. So I'm going to get the length I need here to come back up to here. And then I'm going to look at where it comes under the cover, which I'll be leaving. And I can see that one of the dots conveniently ends up just as it comes around the corner. So I'm going to just get a sharpie. And I put a little dot in that just to remind me, because I'm going to lift this back out. Just enough to actually work on comfortably. Right, okay, so I'm going to unplug this now. It is unplugged. And I'm going to get a very sharp knife. And normally you'd cut on that dot. I shall zoom down just a little tiny bit here for this. Normally they'd cut bang in the dot of a... Uh, because that's actually embossed onto the actual uh, circuit board material. But I'm actually going to cut about an eighth of an inch. That's about three millimetres further away from that, just because it's going to leave me much bigger sort of connections. So I'm going to slice, and there's a possibility that this will still work. Hold on, let's try that. Sometimes you lose a little section of three LEDs, but it's just basically you lose an inch, but it's not that critical. Uh, in this instance, of, uh, although I've butted right up to the end of that LED, it's not killed that section, so that's fine. And what I've got here, I've made lots of little uh, terminated section uh, connectors. I'm going to put connectors in this just so that if I ever have to change one of these uh, sections, one of these stars, I can literally go in uh, and plug the new one in because uh, it will be a connector, just a standard plug on the end of the uh, cable that's feeding it. I'm just getting this... Uh, Residual isopropanol and uh, and hot melt glue out there. It's a bit gooey. Right, so now I want to terminate onto this. So my preference is to terminate onto the front where the LED is. So, to do that, take the snips, put it down the front, carefully you don't damage the LEDs, and just cut uh, that way, and then put the snips in and cut that way, and then fold it back to reveal the solder pads that uh, you do get a connection system for this that basically drives spikes through it but it's big ugly and it makes bad connections i don't like it so my preference is to solder directly onto that and you can see i've got the full size pads here because i did uh, cut it a bit further if i'd cut it on the line i'd have had half size pads which is still fine but i prefer the bigger ones i'd rather sacrifice a few leds just to have those extra bigger pads uh, and then all I need to do is find the soda, and I shall flow some soda onto those. And I shall get my connector, and in this instance, the positive goes to the uh, front where the light comes out here. But that's not always the case. So I'm going to uh, flow the negative on. 
and then the positive. And if I connect this up, theoretically it should light unless I've screwed up horribly. I have screwed up horribly in the past. Uh, so I'm going to actually tuck that in like that. Splendid. And I'll get my connector and plug it on. And that is perfect. So what I'm planning on doing here, just tucking the connector up like that inside, bring it out and then putting that little cap back on. And uh, if I need to change one in situ, all I have to do is pop this this uh, cap off and just plug the, the lead on like that. So that's, uh, that's my pink star done. Let me zoom out. Let me show you my pink star. That doesn't sound right, does it? That is pretty good. I could make it super swampy bright. Yes, that is super swampy bright. That's how bright I want it to look in situ. Uh, but there we go. That is that. And now I just need to work on the rest of the stuff, including building the aluminum frame with the metal mesh on it that I same as I used last year, and then build this controller. But they will be in separate sections of video. Uh, but in the meantime, I have quite a lot of these stars to do. So I shall plot away and do all the other stars with colours like green and blue and red and white. And where's the other ones? Liking this one, the, this one, the orange and the yellow are particularly pleasing. They're uh, nice colours. Uh, but I shall do that. And if if I like the stars of particular colours, or if some are darker than others, what I may do is I may just uh, use a few colours instead. Everything is completely versatile. So I could theoretically, given it's a standard length, I could probably go by these markings in this stuff and actually cut them to pre-made uh, sections. Oh, there's one of the connectors that goes through. You can see it's a big, ugly thing. And it literally just stabs through the uh, the material uh, and makes a friction connection on the, the tape, which isn't really ideal. This uh, The strip inside, incidentally, what we've got here, we've got a flat strip pointing in sideways into a light channel that then diffuses through this front layer, which gives that very, very diffused colour glow. It, it stops it looking dotty. Uh, the To handle the current over long runs, because this comes in huge lengths, this basically comes off a drum. Uh, to handle the current over long runs, they have the the tape has the LEDs in the front with some small bus bars, but in the back it's pretty much solid, two solid bus bars going the full length. So it's actually capable of running quite a lot uh, from a 12 volt supply without too much dimming along the length. But having said that, you'd want to restrict it to fairly sh short lengths just to keep uh, intensity consistent and also allow serviceability. But rightio, I'm going to continue the rest of these and then I shall get the rest of the sign built up.